And welcome back to Immersion Church. I'm Pastor Chris Solak. We are starting a five-week series on living in the presence of God. This is a, an area that we're challenged with, but it's also incredibly foundational. We're going to be talking about five different steps to where we can actually manifest the promises of God and live from his presence, exist in his presence in our day-to-day -day existence. I have I've continually talked with people who, who struggle with the concept behind this. They, they, they struggle with how do I enter the presence of God? How do, I, how do I get God to manifest over my life? And the reality is, is that we have to come into agreement with who he is and the process of existence in him, existence with him, and so often we're given religious process, but we're not given biblical uh, application for this. And so it's like, you know, we, we get a verse here and there. We get we get ideas. We get constructs. You know, we, we talk about being better people. But the reality is, is that you do not have the ability to be a better person. Now, can you make better decisions? Absolutely, you can. But as far as becoming a better person, now, you don't actually physically have that ability. Some of you may believe you have that ability, but you don't. <laughs> and that's the struggle. And that's reason, one of the reasons we see, we see and we hear so much self-help in the current Western church is that there's this belief that we can become better on our own. Now, the, the, the reality is we can, we can make better choices, but do we truly know how? Because when we apply ourselves to situations, we make messes. We do everything in our flesh, yet if we transcend in relationship, in the presence of God, and we're being led and guided by His Spirit, and that by those decisions to obey and agree, we actually come closer to His heart, we take on His nature, and we truly transcend. We transcend our flesh. We transcend uh, the poor philosophies that we have obtained from this world in this false reality, and that we actually start to follow in his footsteps, his path, his direction, and then most importantly, that he is actually leading our lives. That if you do all of the things that we're going to talk about over the next five weeks, and we're going to talk about how they relate to one another. So it's not just a matter of doing them, it's a matter of actually applying them uh, in succinct process to manifest the promises of God over your existence and to unleash heaven in your life. But you have to be in agreement with heaven. You have to be in agreement with heaven. But before we can actually be in agreement with heaven, we have to actually be aware of heaven and who reigns there, who God truly is. And so this brings us uh, to the most fundamental question that we're going to ask over the next five weeks, and that is, so how do we become aware of the presence of God? Well, there's one very distinct way, and it does come from hearing. It comes from hearing. And the one, one of those steps is to hear the word of God by those who have been sent, who are filled with his spirit, that are operating from his presence. But for those that may not have the opportunity to hear the gospel from someone, that in itself is a fundamental problem that people continue to talk about to this day. And even the church in Iran, the underground church in Iran, one of the things that the accounts out of Iran the last few years have been is that Jesus has been appearing to people in Iran. And, the, and, and you go, well, well that's, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, but they actually have belief there that Jesus actually is a prophet or is is because the Quran speaks to the fact that Jesus actually exists. So there's some form of belief, but then he actually appears to them and starts to testify to who he truly is and the agreement between heaven and earth. And these people come to believe through that. And we're going to talk about this next few weeks. So there is such a thing as miraculous encounter. And some of us have had miraculous encounter. My salvation story is a miraculous encounter. I, I didn't have any Christians around me. Um, I wasn't at church. I hadn't just heard a message. I hadn't hit rock bottom. And in those ways, I'm, I'm extremely lucky. Like you could say lucky, but blessed. How would we want to identify that? That when Jesus came to me uh, poolside 
<laughs> in July of 2014, he melted my heart. I mean, he just, he changed my nature. I changed, his presence came so close, it shifted me. And it shifted me so fast that I had to go to the book of Romans. I was looking in scripture, trying to conceptually understand how my nature changed and how it changed so fast. And the reality was he changed it. I let him do it. And, and how I let him do it was, was in this way that I, I literally said, Lord, if this is you, who am I to say no to you? And in that I said, yes. And I put my existence in his hands just like that. But it took an awareness and I had an awareness of Jesus, the Holy Spirit, all of these things. I was raised in the church. I had been in the church in a long time. But when he came to me, there was an instant recognition of who he was and that I wanted to be with him. And it changed me fundamentally. And I was ready for that change. Okay, so there's an awareness that comes from hearing from him. And I heard from him. I, I, I had this sense of knowing who he was. And we know that the Holy Spirit is the one that brings this awareness. So how do we become aware of the presence of God? It is by the Holy Spirit. Whether the Holy Spirit speaking through someone that God has sent or the Holy Spirit making us aware of God as he moves towards us. And that and then that not we're just aware of God, but that we're aware that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. John 16, uh, 7 through 5, and I'm reading out of the Holman, says this, nevertheless, meaning Jesus speaking here, I am telling you the truth. It is for your benefit that I go away because I don't go away. The counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. It's very important for us to understand why these things are so important, this level of awareness that we must have as to who the Holy Spirit is. Okay, the reality in this is that we don't know what we don't know until we know it. And this works for everything. This is why we go to school. We learn, we go and we learn to play nice with others and we learn the alphabet. We learn our numbers. Why? So that we can then go from kindergarten to first grade and learn how to read and write to do basic arithmetic. So there's foundations here that we build upon, and it's no different as a believer. And the first step is, do you want Jesus? And we're going to get into this this morning, but the reality is, do we want relationship with God? Are we truly seeking God in spirit and in truth? And if we are, it gives the spirit the opportunity to create a level of awareness. And that awareness is in a, uh, several specific areas. It's, it's about sin, righteousness, and judgment. And, and, and here we go. It says about sin because they do not believe in me. Okay, so there's an absence of belief. This awareness comes in a conviction. That conviction is awareness. That conviction is not uh, the, this condemnation. I hear so many people talk about conviction and really it's just correction. Convictions and awareness of where you stand that not that you've been convicted, but that there is a conviction of awareness now as to where you stand. And so, and so in that there's a realization that you may be on the wrong side of things because you don't believe in Jesus. Okay. And then about righteousness, because I am going to the Father and you will no longer see me. And about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. Okay, so righteousness, because Jesus is now the righteous judge. He's going to the Father and was deemed the righteous judge. And now judgment is coming over the earth because the one who has created this system is now being judged. Therefore, the system is being judged because the Messiah has come. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. So when he's speaking whatever he hears, he's speaking from the Father, speaking from the Son in agreement. And he will also declare, declare to you what is to come. 
There's a movement of the prophetic that comes through the Spirit of God. He will glorify me, meaning Jesus, because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. Everything the Father has is mine. This is why I told you that he takes from what is mine and will declare it to you. So Jesus is now outlining this process of how we interact with heaven once he leaves earth. And it's very important for us to understand that Holy Spirit has been present, and we're going to go into this this morning, that the Holy Spirit has been present in the creation. We know that David, for instance, received the anointing and said he was possessed by the Holy Spirit from that moment on. But that most people haven't had the access to the Holy Spirit. It wasn't until Messiah came that this was now going to be made available to us. And Jesus even said, it's not until I go. It's not until I go. And we can go to Acts chapter 1. He tells the apostles there, wait. Wait. Go and wait until the Holy Spirit comes. Don't do anything until the Holy Spirit comes. I can remember after I having my initial encounter with Jesus, being like, what do you want me to do now? And he said, and I heard a voice say, go lay down. So the next morning... I laid down, I intentionally laid down, and the presence of God fell upon me. It was the Holy Spirit, but the presence of God, and I started to hear from heaven. Now, that was my encounter, and, and that's what kicked this thing off for my life. The reality is, is that there is this intersection that the Holy Spirit must come and that we must have connection to the Holy Spirit. And there must be belief in Holy Spirit. There must be acceptance of Holy Spirit, or you're going to be very disconnected from heaven. You can, you can say today, I believe Jesus is God. But if you reject Holy Spirit, then no, you don't. Because Jesus said, Holy Spirit's going to come. He's going to counsel you, lead you into all truth. And he's going to speak to you, but it's not going to be him. It's going to, it's not going to be from him. It's going to be from me, but it's going to come through him. Okay. And that, and that if you don't have belief in me, I'm going to convict you and make you aware when it comes to sin, righteousness, and judgment. This is, this is the very, this is just the, the, the very basic tenet of purpose Within the Holy Spirit, and this is the awareness point of where we become aware of the presence of God. And with that, we then have a decision. But this is my, my first point this morning, that we become aware of the presence of God by hearing from, the, from both Holy Spirit or someone sharing the gospel of Christ. And I shouldn't say or, it's and, and someone sharing the gospel of Christ. That, that the Holy Spirit working through someone can be that action, or it can be the Holy Spirit all on its own. John 4, 7 through 14. Jesus is meeting with the Sumerian woman. He is revealing himself as the Messiah for the very first time. This is, this is why we, we watched this, this, this video this morning to preface this for you, because it is the awareness of the Messiah and how we enter into the presence of God, because Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Is he not? Yet Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit is the way we communicate with the Father and the Son. So, a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Give me a drink, Jesus said to her, for his disciples had gone into town to buy food. How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Of course, there's a lot of racial prejudice here, and the Jews thought of the Samaritans as, as like dogs, less than dogs. And so a Samaritan woman would be even lesser than a lesser dog at this point. Um, and there was true vehement and hatred between the Samaritans and the Jews at this time. So, so deep prejudicial uh, uh, cultural divide here, even though they both believe in Yahweh. And this is actually Jacob's well. She asked him, for Jews do not associate with Samaritans. And Jesus answered, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying it to you, give me a drink, you would ask him and he would give you living water. Now, Jesus is declaring uh, two things here. 
that living water being the presence and the awareness of God, that life-giving source of heaven, but it's something that he speaks to if you knew the gift of God. Who's the gift of God? Jesus is the gift of God. We talk about being the fivefold gift. If Jesus is sending and purposing your life and sending you somewhere through intimacy in the presence of God, that you become the gift. The fivefold gift ultimately is you when God has complete and total control over you and that you're obedient to his purpose and calling. That it's no longer you, it's him, and he can move through you, he can speak through you, he can share through you, that he, that at that point, you become the gift to whoever God sends you to. And Jesus was the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, so therefore, he was the first gift. He was the first gift of the Spirit sent to mankind for the point of reconciliation, that ministry of reconciliation, and so this is what he's speaking to. You don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. So where do you get this living water, the woman asks. You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and livestock. Jesus said, everyone who drinks from this water will get thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give him and never will never get thirsty again, ever. In fact, the water I will give him will become a well of water springing up within him for eternal life. He's speaking to the presence of God residing and flowing out. That kind of goes back to point number one, doesn't it? So my second point this morning, the Holy Spirit comes to those who, uh, th to those who uh, are seeking the Father in spirit and in truth. It is important for us to have this distinction that the Spirit is tirelessly seeking amongst the earth for those who, do, who want Him. The awareness comes and that God's presence can then be placed within us. And then we would we would actually talk to about this from a cleansing standpoint as talking about baptism that, that this is the actual that we 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 have the baptism of water which is a cleansing and then we have the baptism of Jesus, baptism of Messiah where the Holy Spirit and the righteousness of God is it not interesting that Jesus said that in John 16 that this awareness when it comes, it's going to bring awareness about righteousness, sin, and judgment. And, and so sin as to our placement, because we haven't believed. So if we believe, God is faithful to forgive us our sins. And then as an action of our belief, we would receive the righteousness of God, which comes as the fire through the baptism of the Messiah. And we receive the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And when we do that and take on the identity and the presence of God, the indwelling of God, we pass through the fire. Judgment passes over. This is the whole point of Passover. And this is the process of Messiah in which we receive relationship. But it stems from this point of awareness, and we must be aware of the presence of God. And that the awareness is where we make the decision. Whether to believe or not believe, it's, it has to start right there. And we're going to get into it over the next couple of weeks because there is a, a process then that takes place. And here's the thing, that if we actually move into the presence of God, we actually obey the Holy Spirit before we even come into belief. That the reason we come into belief is actually because the Holy Spirit shows us who God is and how we are to come to him and brings agreement from heaven to earth within us, that we have this understanding as to that we must move into the presence of God in order to be saved. We say it all the time here at Immersion Church that salvation is found in the presence of God. You can't be apart from God and do anything. Jesus himself said that, that apart from the Father, he could do nothing. What makes us think apart from Holy Spirit and the Father and the Son, we can do anything. And that, and that salvation is found in him, Christ Jesus. 
So it is, it is to understand that it's this point of relationship that we become aware of the presence of God and that we must move into it. First, we must obey what he tells us to do. So before we even believe, we have to obey, we have to become aware of the Spirit and who the Spirit testifies who is God, which is the man, the Son of God, Christ Jesus, and that by that that we obey the Holy Spirit and what it tells us to do, which is to believe. So we have to obey the Holy Spirit and its instruction to believe in order to be saved. Why? Because that belief then compels us to receive the fullness of Christ and be indwelt by heaven that we would now be found in the presence of God, born again, that we would be saved. And I'm like we said, the next two weeks, next week, we are going to talk about obedience. The week after, we're going to talk about belief. And then we've got a couple more that will start to take us deeper, deeper. For those who have gone through the follow project, they already know where I'm going with this. Well, we are going to go into this in much greater detail. And for those who are going through the follow project, I hope that you're taking notes here for the purpose of, at some point, at least being able to share, if not teach this to others. John 4, 21 through 26, Jesus told her, Believe me, woman, an hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know, and we worship what we do know because salvation is from the Jews. And he's speaking to himself there. But an hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Yes, the Father wants such people to worship Him, and God is spirit, and those who worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. This is so important and so fundamental to uh, who we are, and this is, this is the danger of conceptual Christianity, where we are told that through our minds we must conceptualize an eternal God before we can believe. No, it is, it is taking... God, by his word, that he is who he says he is, by the awareness of the Holy Spirit, that we would obey his command to believe, and that we put our faith and our trust in him with our lives, that our actions would then honor him in this way, but that God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said to him, I know the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. And with that, Jesus says, I am he. Jesus told her, the one speaking to you. Boom. The reality is, is that the Spirit of God comes to each and every one of us to reveal who he is. And you say, well, this woman just, she believed in the idea of Messiah, but she couldn't even recognize the Messiah in front of her. Of course not. Of course not. I think it was almost more difficult for her than it is for a lot of us. I think it's easier that the Holy Spirit comes to us and ministers to us rather than being face-to-face. -face. it's. I think it would be harder to receive the Messiah face-to-face -face than it would be by spirit. Because you're looking at a human being, and you're like, uh... I know how people react to me when I say certain things or God has me do certain things just because I'm in the flesh. There, there, there's just a reaction, and all I'm doing is declaring Jesus, which they say they're in agreement with, but I declare Jesus, and they're like, hmm. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to think about, I'm going to think about that. And it's like, well, why don't you just ask him? If you believe in Jesus, then you should be in your agreement with heaven. And heaven actually said for me to do this, then you should just ask heaven and heaven should confirm it. It's so interesting when people can try to conceptualize God, there's rarely any agreement. I know Mark and I talk about this. There's rarely any agreement because they don't get an answer and their intellect tells them, I don't know. I don't know what to think. But when we run into people who are of the spirit, we just say, well, test Jesus. When we went to Louisville, Kentucky last year and went to Asbury, and then we, we came back and we came back to Louisville and we, we went to this prayer meeting 
and the people leading it, they're heavy intercessors. And we got to talking with them afterwards. And we were just like, of course, during the time, like, hey, just test this, test that. They were doing it and there was complete, there was actually kind of like a, like kind of like a pessimism or kind of like a, like a, you know, they're kind of one eye in you like, well, we're going to see if you guys are really of God or not. By the end of it, because we kept saying, go to the spirit, the spirit confirmed who we were. They were hugging and kissing us by the time we left. There was, we went from like, hi, to, you know, hugs and we're going to be out in Vegas at some point. We'd love to come see you and. When it's in the spirit and God is spirit, there's agreement, there's solidarity, there's excitement, there's joy, there's brother and sisterhood. We're not, we're no longer strangers, we're family. And that was in a matter of like a couple of hours. God, it, there is no distance in the spirit. But there's a difference between being in your flesh and being in the spirit. And Jesus said the true worshipers are going to have to do it in spirit and truth because God is spirit. You're going to have to come to him as he is in transcend. He's not going to change for you. You're going to have to transcend for him. Guess what? You're not God. You're not God. None of us are God. But we have the ability to actually, because of Jesus Christ, because of the Holy Spirit, to know the Father. To know the Father, but he's less of a very specific process in which was we must enter, we must receive, and we must actually have. If you want to have intimacy with God, if you want to exist from the presence of God, if you want your life to move from heaven now, Luke 9, some of you, before you taste death, will walk in the kingdom of heaven. Come on. For those of you who want that, this is for you. So my third and final point this morning is when people become aware of the presence of God, they must submit themselves through worship, which we would call obedience in order to enter his presence. This is, this is the entry point. Paul talks about it as this physical act of worship. Your obedience, what separates you from the world is the presence of God. That not you, not only you've received it, but that you're in agreement with it. Not to save you from hell, but to come into relationship with Jesus Christ. This is the hope of glory for all of us. But it starts with the awareness. and we must, we must receive. We must accept when God knocks on that door. When we, when we finally recognize that it's Jesus, you can't hesitate and say, well, yeah, sure, maybe, but. No, it's either in or out. You either come through or you don't. And, and this is the thing that I, I, it's dangerous, is to say, well, I, I believe with my mind, but I don't believe with my existence. When there's not an evidence of Jesus in your life, don't delude yourself. You're not living for him. For the next few weeks, we're going to talk about how we can take from awareness to that, to that, to that act of worship, the obedience, how we start to function through that in our day-to-day -day existence. And then how does that trigger belief? How does that belief become action? that would start to trigger and manifest heaven in our existence, that would bring the blessing of God, not for financial wealth, but for well-being because you're in contact with heaven. That when people come and get to know you, Jesus is there with you. That you're atmospheric, cha atmospherically changing the existence around you. And that you become love. That you become love for others. And that your life becomes a life of peace, regardless of the trial and the tribulation, regardless of the circumstance of the world around you, because you're operating from heaven and not from earth. Because to become enveloped by the presence of God is to never, ever, ever be the same again. Let's pray. Jesus, we, we love you, Lord. Um, so grateful for your sacrifice that we would have the ability to know you here in this broken, corrupt place and that you gave us salvation, this ability to operate from your presence. 
and that you left us here in this fallen condition that we would share with others, testify to others as to what you've done for us, the peace that it's brought, and that it's completely available for them. Jesus, speak to our hearts. Maybe for the that, that moment of awareness, today is that moment of awareness for someone. If that's the case, I would ask you to trust Jesus, to trust Jesus, to listen to that voice and ask, what would you have me do? And do what it says. That you can come close to Jesus today. That you can hear his voice. That he can guide your life. And that you can move into eternity today. Lord, we we love you. We are so grateful for everything that you've done for us. And all that you're continuing to do for the world around us. Jesus, in solidarity, solidarity with Revelation, we continue to say, Come, Lord Jesus, come. Come heal our land. Come change our hearts. Come show us truth and righteousness and love, what it really is. Come, Jesus, come. In your name, in the name of Jesus, Yahshua HaMessiah, amen. We love you guys. This is this is awesome. I love this is one of my favorite things to teach on. It is as foundational as it gets. But we there's nothing more exciting is nothing more exciting than coming deeper into the presence of God and being able to share that process with other people. That is the good news, is it not? It is. (laughs) So we're going to be talking about this for the next four weeks. Please join us next week. We will be talking about obedience. Until then, be blessed.